Today we are going to be talking about some overhyped K-dramas that I came across in my five to six years of watching K-dramas. These are those K-dramas that just did not work for me and I, and I honestly believe that the story or the characters were not as good as people are making them out to be. However, this is my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't have any salt, but metaphorically, take it. Of course, I'll be talking about five K-dramas. Two, three, four, five. Yes, I can count. Five K-dramas that I've completed, and then I'll talk about two K-dramas that I dropped, but I, ugh, I have so many bitter feelings towards those that I also wanted to talk about those. Let's start by talking about the completed K-dramas. So the first K-drama that I thought wasn't that great and was actually really disappointing by the end is Strong Woman Do Bang Su. Strong Woman Do Bang Su is basically about this girl and she has this superpower where she is really really strong. So she looks really adorable but <laughs> but she is really really strong and she must be a bodyguard to Pak Hyung Shik's character. So I watched uh, Strong Woman Do Bang Su while it was airing and honestly during the first half of the drama I was really really enjoying it because I thought Park Bo Young and Park Hyung Shik were so adorable together. However, the issue with this drama is that it dragged a lot and after episode 10 or so, the drama just lost focus and was just not as interesting or as entertaining. I feel like the biggest issue with the drama that many people have pointed out and even myself and even I have noticed is that they tried to make this drama so many things. They tried to make it a comedy, a drama, a romance, even a mystery thriller including a serial killer. So this drama was just so many things at once and not all of them worked well. Yes, the romance was really good and I really did enjoy both Pak Bo Young and Pak Hing Shik's characters. But other than that, the drama did not have much going for it in terms of stories or the pacing or anything. And the whole side plot and the whole story with, you know, the serial killer was, just felt so underwhelming to me. However, I think the biggest issue with Strong Woman Do Bong Su that a lot of people are not talking about and I have noticed and it still annoys me is number one, how they played off uh, Do Bong Su's mom like physically abusing her dad as comedy. Like that is so messed up and she even hits him and it's played off for laughs and it just it was so disturbing and I really did not like that at all. The other issue with this drama is how they portrayed this queer character as being really annoying and obsessive and childish and I really did not like it. I felt like this drama was really insensitive at times, you know, with the comedy and how they portray things that are not as funny or serious as comedy. So yeah, that is my beef with Straw Woman Do Bang Su. I had a hard time finishing the last few episodes. I actually like watched the last few episodes at like 1.5 speed or 2 times speed to finish it because I wanted to know how it would end at least. So yeah, overall this drama was just such a letdown and even if it was enjoyable at you know at the beginning. Next drama is honestly is the number one drama that comes to my head when thinking about overrated or overhyped dramas and that is Hotel Del Luna. <sighs> so Hotel Del Luna is basically about IU's character. She basically has this hotel which is for ghosts and spirits that has passed on and then she hires a manager which is a human manager and this drama is supposed to be like a gender flipped version of Beauty and the Beast. Now I love IU's character in this drama. I feel like IU's character is the main reason why if you want to watch this drama you should because her character is amazing and interesting and layered and Yi Do Yan also has like a supporting role and he is really really good and I, and I love him. I wasn't a big fan of the main romance between IU and Yu and Yo Jin Gu but I did really like the romance between Mina and Pio's characters. And it's not like it was a bad drama or it was, you know, had offensive or, you know, horrible things in it like Do Bong Su. It felt like the plot was just not that interesting or engaging. And I feel like that's mainly because we have seen dramas like Hotel Del Luna so many times. Like The Master Sun or Bring It On Ghost. It just reminds me so much of dramas, you know, that were popular back in the day. So a drama like Hotel Del Luna just felt like deja vu to me. If you've never watched another like supernatural K-drama, then chances are you'll love or enjoy Hotel Del Luna. But for me personally, it just felt like stuff I have seen countless times before in supernatural dramas. So it just didn't, you know, do anything for me. There are some stories in this drama that I did really enjoy and I thought were really well executed. But 
the overall drama and you know the conclusion and the climax all of it was just very underwhelming to me again it's not a horrible drama it's still good for what it is but it's like it wasn't anything you know exciting or interesting but Ayu's character, love her and her wardrobe, her fashion, oh my god, A+, plus. love that. 18, now, <laughs> I was a huge, huge fan of season 1 of 18, but season 2 of 18 literally shot itself in the foot. It was just disappointment on top of disappointment. 18 is basically a web series and it's basically about two girls with the same name, Kim Ana and Do Hana, and they basically have conflicting personalities and the two Hanas and their romances and their school lives and I feel like the thing I don't like about 18 is that I felt like the two main characters felt like Mary Sue's honestly that's why I had a hard time like really liking the drama I did not care for the romances and in season one it was at least fun and enjoyable and I got to like slowly like Dohana but in season two they mainly focused on Kim Hana which was Nan's character and she had this romance with Bowman's character and it was so forced and just weird and I did not like it at all, especially since both characters are so unlikable and just ugh. Bowman is such a sweet kid because he is my golden child bias, so I so it made me really sad that I did not like his character at all, which was Ryu Juha. Not only that, but Kim Hana is just such a horrible, horrible person and I hated that she suffered zero consequences for her actions. She literally did horrible things to Do Hana and also her other friend and the writers basically gave us a very stupid sob story about how she was an outcast and whatnot she suffered no consequences for her actions and she got a happy ending and i really really hated it i really hated it so freaking much and in the season two the only characters that were interesting was donghee's character and also god what's her name mina's characters i really liked their characters and i would have loved 18 more if it focused on their characters instead but no the whole season had to be about kim hana being a freaking brat and i hated it i hated it so much and with the whole april scandal going on i don't know if anybody could even enjoy 18 anymore because it's just it's a trash fire honestly season one was at least somewhat good because of Dohana and you know the other guy I forgot his name Shiwu but season two was just stupid absolutely stupid and don't even get me started on 2020 and how awful that ended up being because yeah this drama is a fight for my way now honestly I enjoyed this drama while I was watching it and after I finished it I was like okay I did not love love this but I still did enjoy it and I don't regret watching it but now looking back on the drama, I realized it wasn't as good and that if I watched it now, I wouldn't have liked it at all and that there are some aspects to the drama that are very questionable. So there's this video that I watched on YouTube about abuse in K-dramas and how it's like romanticized. And one of the examples was Pak Sojun's character being really, really possessive and, you know, controlling towards um, Kim Ji Won's character. And when I rewatched those clips on that video, I, it made me really uncomfortable. And I was like, wow, I had no idea that Pak Sojun's character was like that to Kim Ji Won's character. And they were the main couple of the drama. So it's just, it's really weird. But other than that, I felt like Fight For My Way started off being really interesting. It was basically a drama about these four friends, about two characters that are passionate about something. One of them is passionate about boxing or kickboxing, and the other one is passionate to be a reporter. But both of their dreams do not come true, and now they're working hard to make their dreams come true. So that is basically what Fight For My Way is about. It sounds really, really interesting because these characters do have some really interesting problems that could be very relatable. But the drama just became really underwhelming but with the way it progressed and the way it handled the relationships. I really hated how they handled the second couple relationship because in the second couple, uh, the boyfriend, he was horrible to the second female lead, treated her like horribly, basically cheated on her emotionally and this, it, the, her whole character arc was basically getting over him and dumping his ass. And then when it, it does happen in the last episode, they get back together. And I'm like, what was the point? What was the point of her whole character arc? If she was going to break up with him and realize that their relationship is very toxic, only for her to get back together with him at the end. And of course, 
there is the mention of how Poxy Jun's character is actually very, you know, toxic. You know, he's very obsessive and possessive and like really, really jealous, which is very is romanticized in this drama, but it's actually, you know, very horrible if you if he was like a real person. The other thing I did not like, which is honestly a nitpick, and that is Kim Ji Won basically tells the audience that Cinderella is stupid and that I don't wanna be like Cinderella, I wanna be like this other person or this other character who is very badass and cool. And I don't know, it just sends a really horrible message to people that Cinderella, who is literally a victim of abuse, is stupid and horrible because she, you know, married a prince. So I don't like that narrative about at all. I'm pretty sure the drama writers just threw that in thinking they were doing something, but honestly, they like it was it felt really dumb. And honestly, it just gave off I'm not like other girls vibes. And another thing I did not like is that Poxy June's character had this girlfriend and she was like antagonized so badly and for what? For absolutely nothing. I really really did not like that they antagonized her character so much just to make Kim Ji Won's character look good. And the last drama that I want to talk about that I completed that I think is really overhyped recently, not recently, like it's a recent one and that is True Beauty. Ugh, True Beauty, this drama, this comic, so many gripes with it, but let's talk about it. So True Beauty is basically about this girl named Joo Kyung and she is considered ugly and she's very insecure about herself so when she moves to a new town and goes to a new school she starts wearing makeup and once she starts wearing makeup she's beautiful and popular and everybody loves her and it's basically about her being in this love triangle with two really attractive boys Suho and Sojun. Sojun? Sojun. Sojun. So True Beauty is basically just your typical romantic comedy K-drama with a lot of silly silly moments. I Okay, plot-wise, my issue with True Beauty was that it just felt like stuff I have seen countless times before. It was really stupid at times. There were certain moments that just did not make sense logically. And yeah, this drama just felt very reminiscent of older K-dramas, but not really in a good way. I will say that this drama did have some genuinely funny moments, but overall the story was just not that interesting. It just, it was very cliched and it was basically your typical romantic K-drama where the female lead falls for the male lead and then horribly treats the second male lead and then there is some conflict that happens and they break up and then they get back together. Like honestly, it's just True Beauty is literally so basic for a K-drama. And honestly, the thing that I hated the most, the way they handled Sujin's character. Like, Sujin started off being such a great and fantastic character, and she's also somebody who suffers a lot mentally, and she is horribly treated by her family. And they take a character that is so broken, and they villainize her for petty boy drama, and I hated it so freaking much. Seriously, like, Sujin and Joo Kyung had more chemistry than Joo Kyung had with Suho or Sojun. So, yeah, the forced heterosexuality in True Beauty, it makes me mad. It really does. Yeah, honestly, the real ships in True Beauty are Suho and Sojun and Sujin and Joo Kyung. And honestly, it's like, you cannot even deny it because the chemistry is just there. And I hated how the whole school turned on Joo Kyung when they realized that, you know, she was not wearing makeup. It just felt very unrealistic. Yeah, True Beauty is just unrealistic with the way they handle their topics and it feels very shallow and surface level. I also did not like Joo Kyung's character. I found her to be so childish, immature, and yeah, there was just nothing that I really liked about her character. She was just, I don't know, bland. <laughs> she was like so bland, like honestly, watching paint dry is more interesting than, you know, Joo Kyung's character. I really liked Eunwoo as Suho. I thought he did a really, really good job. And I felt like some of the hate he got was unwarranted. And I feel like for me personally, the reason why I like the reason why I did not drop this drama is because Huang In Yup as Sojun, oh my god, Sojun is so iconic. I still go back and rewatch his scenes or his compilations on YouTube because I just love his character so much. And honestly, Sojun did not deserve everything that happened to him, but he did not deserve to be in a drama like True Beauty. You know, he deserves to be somewhere better. So yeah. Did not like True Beauty at all in terms of plot, story, characters, pacing. Some of the scenes were really, really funny. Sojun is iconic. Love him. Love him. Seriously, like, I rated this drama 8 out of 10, but honestly, without Sojun, it's 2 out of 10 at best. Now I'm going to be talking about two dramas that I dropped and are very popular, but I still do not like at all. The first one being W2 Worlds. Ugh. 
W Two Worlds is basically about this girl who falls in love with a comic book character. Yeah, the comic book character and the comic book or the webtoon that her father created. And it's basically like a romance, mystery, thriller. And I only watched the first eight episodes, so I'll only speak on those eight episodes. And my problem is that they took a concept so interesting and then made it boring. Like, wow, like, <laughs> congrats to W for doing that, because they really did do that. I was really interested in the first two episodes, and then it just went downhill went downhill from there and I really really did not like it and I also wasn't a big fan of the romance it was so insta lovey like ugh, I hated it and it was so weird like think about it like thinking about it it's so weird because she created the comic book character that she falls in love with it is so weird like the concept of it is so freaking weird that she falls in love with something she created and yeah, it was just weird. I did not like it at all. I dropped it after the first eight episodes, and then I went back and checked on reviews to see if this drama would prove me wrong, but the reviews say that they did not really do much with the story, and it was underwhelming, so I have no desire to go back and watch it. The other drama is Love Alarm. Now, I only watched one episode of Love Alarm, and that episode was enough for me to be like, yeah, this drama is horrible, the writing is horrible, the characters are horrible, and I don't want to waste my time anymore on it. So the Love Alarm is basically about this world where I think this app exists where it can show you how many people are in love with you or interested in you. And it's basically about this girl named Jojo and it also has Song Kang who is one of the main love interests and it's basically a love triangle between Jojo and these other two boys. So it's basically, you know, that kind of story. Uh, I found the characters to be so unlikable and so uninteresting and bland and just selfish and it was only one episode. Love Alarm was actually my introduction to Song Kang and when I first saw Song Kang in the drama I was like wow he's very handsome and I would like to see him in a better drama. It took some time, it took, it at least took two years but I got that in Sweet Home and also now in Navilera so yes happy for Song Kang but uh, this drama was so annoying in the first episode alone. Both Jojo and Song Kang's character, they made out at the end of the episode and it made absolute no freaking sense. Like why she would, you know, go with this strange boy she has never met and make out with him. Like this drama, worms for brains. Anyway, and then season two recently came out and I saw the reviews and everybody was talking about how it's basically a waste of time. So I guess I saved myself from dropping this drama after episode one because it's just because it's really terrible, I can tell, just from episode 1 alone. Now, there is one drama that everybody thinks is really overhyped or overrated, but I would like to respectfully disagree, and that is Goblin. I love Goblin. I think Goblin is very entertaining. I think it's really fun. I think the story is really good. The cinematography is amazing. The acting is excellent. The music, oh my god, uh, the soundtrack is amazing. But a lot of people seem to dislike Goblin because it's super popular and another reason is because they think the relationship between Gong Yu's character and the female lead is really weird because of the age gap and how she acts like a literal child and honestly those complaints are valid. But other than that, I loved Goblin. I think Goblin is amazing. Like there are compilations on YouTube or there are like fan edits on YouTube that I, of Goblin that I rewatch all the time and I think the drama is so funny especially due to Lee Dong Wook and Gong Yu's characters and I loved Sunny which is Park Yoon's characters so yeah I love Goblin. I don't get the hate. I do understand some of the criticisms but yeah honestly I don't think Goblin is overrated at all. I feel like it deserves the hype. The inspiration from this video came from this tweet that I saw on Twitter obviously which it says uh, that K-drama fans miss out on the really good dramas because they only focus on visuals and that made a lot of sense and I was like yeah that is the case for a lot of the times because a lot of the times the dramas that feature like really handsome people the dramas just end up being really I don't know not having a good plot but yeah those are all the dramas that I think is overhyped and I was just not a big fan of let me know in the comment section below some dramas you think are overrated or overhyped but please be nice don't be too aggressive or mean that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you later Bye bye